I click it. I click. I click. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dev Company 145. And I am Chi Leung. Hey, hey. Uh, why are you why are you guys muted? I don't know. I'm Tristan. I someone muted me. Did you mute me? No, I, I think it's a new stream yard setting. I think it's a I'm new setting. Sure. Also, when you go live, everyone gets muted immediately. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm so, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and Trist we have Tristan. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So that's that. So it's working. Okay. I'm. I got confused. You got confused because I was supposed. Confused to because you're an AI. Yeah, <laughs> I have a new overlord. I have new overlord with me. I will show the demo later. So let's start. Welcome to Dev Coming Number One Four Five, and let's start mm -hmm. with our events. Uh, I'm going to show the whole screen because there's a whole reason for it, to be honest. But let's start with our meetups. Uh, this uh, this week, next week, will be happening in a way that we have tech up. And yeah. at the same time, there's PyCom. We have is doing it one. every month as well. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. So the big ish, uh, actually, it will be smaller. So there will be like 2021. I call uh, dot icon dot my icon dot my schedule. So the schedule is out. Uh, I hope you're still able to buy a ticket because uh, it's day is pretty cheap. So and the topic is not too bad actually. So we have uh, we have it's topic on the observation. Ah <laughs> uh, what? No, the way you put it, like the topic is not so uh, not too bad actually. Yeah, <laughs> Should actually I be worried? <laughs> Okay, it's pretty good. I'm saying it's pretty good. <laughs> because look at the, the first topic, it's like whether event really present an observation, so you my PyTorch. Then we have a secure PyP uh, uh, downloads. Mm -hmm. because our keep friend Fast is uh, going to speak. Yes, of course. Then we have a uh, micro Python, second Python talk uh, uh, use, uh, using Py, the uh, Raspberry Pi RP2040 chip. Uh, okay, it's pretty good if you are, and it's, believe it or not, it's not full of machine learning talk. I mean, it's leaning toward that, but it's leaning it's toward that, but there is some fundamental. <laughs> For example, there's some PyPI security, there's a flask, there's testing, there's quite a few testing. Okay, good to know. And there's some security, uh, security. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it's the variety that I know. Now. So it's the type, of, it's the type of variety that I actually know from the previous PyCon. So yeah, uh, if you're interested, join them. Uh, and I believe, I hope they still sell ticket. Are they selling ticket? And they're still selling ticket for twenty ringgit. Uh, it's so cheap. Don't bother with this. So anything you want to know? If not, we move really on. Bad. Unless you're one of oh, our, I, fr our poor friend. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I think the important question is what, what are the swag available? I don't know because question. Uh, I'm not the organizer anymore. Go, go check it out, I guess. Yes. But will there be swag available? Uh, I doubt it. I really doubt it. Really? I, I don't know. think so. Okay. Mm. All right, let's start with our <laughs> bus corner. So the first one is a Windows subsystem for Android shows up on Microsoft Store. So this is like the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, nobody knows anything yet, but... Uh, so originally they show for Xbox, but it's not for Xbox anymore. Uh, I think this is interesting because Windows is really interesting now in a way that that making an operating system to run another operating system for mm -hmm. quote unquote serious uh, development work right uh this is the only operating system that i know that do that i mean we used to do that for on linux but this is like toy os right 
But I think this is interesting because mm -hmm. this one way for you to bring Android application, which is a lot out there, into the Windows uh, ecosystem. Mm. I I heard they are uh, they are going to support uh, Android on Windows as well, right? Correct. So this yeah. might be a way. This might be a way because there is literally no announcement since Windows Eleven announced uh, and being announced. How do they plan to run Android application? Well, maybe this is the way. Okay. And they're they're already running the VM, right? They're already running WSL, so it's probably that they are going to be doing it. The problem I think that is going to happen is the VM will most likely be x86 instead yeah. of doing the translation to yeah. uh, ARM. And yeah. so a lot of applications, especially games on Android, are only compiled for uh, ARM 32, Correct. ARM 32 even, not even ARM 64. And so right. um, yeah, so there, there's going to, it's either people are like, especially the game people would want to support Windows. But then again, the problem is uh, the people who run these things, like, the, like especially for the games, they don't, they don't make money from people who run emulators because you'd, you'd want them to run it on a mobile phone so that they carry it all around, not run it on a computer 24-7, yeah. let's say. Correct. So it's, not uh, in the same it's, box. Correct. And also another it's, interesting it's thing, uh, Windows is have some of the better Android integration with the operating system. Uh, I'm using Windows Companion on Android, or I say Android Companion for Windows. Either way, either way, uh, they have some very interesting integration in the way that you can run an application directly, or, uh, indirectly on your Windows. Uh, what they do is they do something equivalent to what's the remote Android control thing again. Uh, what 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 is that? I I, I uh, think I... You, it, I can I can mirror the Android screen. What's this thing? Is the thing called the? SDR? There are many applications that do that. There are lots of things that can do that. Yeah yeah yeah. It's one of those applications. So they have that by Windows Companion app. Then uh, SwiftKey, which is one of, which is actually owned by Microsoft, which, uh, yeah. which I just remember. Uh, they can share. They can actually share the clipboard so you can share pictures or uh, things over so uh it's pretty good actually it's uh, the integration is pretty good and maybe with this we can see more things coming to android la. we close to it because i use android so for reasons so anything mm. you want to go on if not i'm going to move no nope. well uh looking forward to it we'll see yes. right now the yeah. way i run android apps is through bluestacks uh, which yep. is fine uh, yes. Some of the other Android emulators like Memu or Nox, they have a lot of advertising. So this might yeah. be a, yeah. like a really good way to run applications that are only available or has better UI than uh, their Windows or what to call it counterparts. Yes, uh, but see. just note that uh, Microsoft don't did not announce a lot of stuff yet. So we just know that this exists and it's releasing soon-ish. So next thing, open WRT 21.1, first stable release. So this is actually one of the big release for open WRT, the open uh, router firmware. So TLS supported included. This, this is uh so uh, yeah, speaking of those things, right? This this is great for e-waste because a lot of the old routers, they're powerful enough, especially the expensive ones, they have a lot of RAM yeah. RAM. Yeah. But because of all of the adv uh, like advances on encryption, uh, SSL security, the encryption stuff, they're Correct. they're not useful anymore. Right? Correct. But because of the Open w uh, WRT, yeah, you still can reuse your old routers that are still useful. Yeah. And bring them all to to like modern standards. So you you per start not getting any more e waste, especially the electronic kind. Correct. Uh, but just note that uh, you need to look at the hardware requirement. It, you may not. Uh, I think most hardware should be. Most hardware should be well, fine. Regard, most so, high end routers should be fine. Yeah. Like the high end ones. Uh, like the really cheap ones, probably not because, again, the cheap ones are usually yeah. e waste from. Yeah, like, they're, they're e waste. You cannot even flash it. Yes. Yeah. So, so if you're going to be buying uh, routers, 
think of buying it for the long run like for for like it will last for 10 to 15 years because Correct. if you if you buy a cheap one it's going to last for two years and then you you buy a new one and it's a waste of money correct yeah. and also there's some config, new configuration syntax uh what adjacent is mostly to for conf, uh, on board devices new hardware target of course but they also the drop hardware typical uh aslr i don't remember what is this oh i just uh i just layouts randomization is for security so it's for hardening uh it's support it's support container interestingly uh the se linux support interesting uh just note that a lot of these are using uh muscle libc and not necessarily the glibc yeah. so the way how dns this is a small device and you work huh uh the difference is uh the the dns uh resolver might be uh, behave a bit different correct compared to to the glibc i mean this is a behavior uh. correct uh if you just use uh if you just use your router as an end user probably not much is happening at, other than some sweet thing but if you like to play around with hardware and you want to play with this it's awesome this is awesome so they even got WPA3 supported, which is awesome. So, uh, anything else to add on top of this? If not, I'm going to move on. Yeah. So, this one is scary. I, and now you know what Google recommend me as ads. Let's move on. Uh, China Airlines <laughs> yeah. uh, actually uh, on Ju June 14, uh, when they touched down, uh, a lot of all their computers, their uh, system are pretty fail so uh, not, nobody dies nobody dies uh it's really minor but it's scary so uh so this is one of those environments where computer had to be that reliable right mm -hmm. and when things fail yeah uh of course uh you look at finding us uh there's a lot of stuff like uh the the reading is wrong lead to another lead to another it's pretty complicated so uh go to our website uh open the link uh they will see uh how this kind of thing happened so yeah uh uh when, when people thought the embedded system is dead reliable not anymore and well, it's, it's usually not reliable like yeah but they have uh, well, they have redundancy Mm. Oh yeah, because because it is like not reliable. So actually, the, like the best way to fix like embedded device is to reset them, because Correct. you usually cannot recover, right? Correct. So that's why you have all of these things. Correct. So we just uh, so this that on the on the industry one. Let's say you got some very extreme environment, then you may have a computer that never turn on. So for example, Hubble Space Space Telescope. What they do is they have to turn on the backup computer. Or the backup computer mm -hmm. uh that in some uh in i think in space shuttle i believe uh there is multiple computer then if one of the cosmic ray flip a bit then uh <laughs> because it's an odd number odd number then if the two computer agrees and one computer disagree then uh the result is voted out la. so uh the majority wins la. so uh there's sounds a like a sounds like a kubernetes cluster no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> like electing the uh i don't but know but in this case in this case what happened is the cosmic ray will flip a bit of one hardware so they have three different computer for that but communities is one computer right unless you have three mm -hmm. computer running the cluster then yeah which is actually very interesting i should share the i should share the video a uh, youtube link about uh a youtube link about uh about cosmic ray it's pretty cool actually next one a uh, u.s cyber command say uh, lsm confluence uh had a lot of expectation and only get worse so what this means is uh i don't know because it's confluence so you just need to be careful i don't know i don't even use confluence <laughs> uh it's used by big company la. 
So yeah. the, it used by Confluence Server and Data Center for the it used Confluence. Uh, so Confluence is a big company which makes them a very attractive target because once you have that, then you can access information when needed. So and when you deploy it on your server, then you have to update. But sometimes, okay, take away. I do not know how Confluence uh, as a business run, but commercial software license sometimes you have to pay for subscription if you don't pay for it then you don't get updated then you get vulnerabilities yeah so if you use cloud uh, which is why if you can use cloud service that that even you don't you know, uh, you're not paying for the subscription just not using uh, the software don't worry because the uh, enterprise they don't like patching their system often they often yes. have a, they often like to have a slight like every i mean even every year is already considered a really good good Correct. good pace often Correct. it's uh, less than that uh i do not know where our house outside malaysia goes but in malaysia we are very traditional a factory device can run i think multiple i think years. it's a uh, it's similar for around the world enterprise around the world are the same <laughs> correct so these things are factory devices right quote unquote and those things are not replaced every year uh, which is why when uh, for some time when uh, when I think people go to enterprise, uh, everybody is complaining that why are we still using Windows XP, for example? Uh, if not because cloud hey, uh, is proven, yeah, <laughs> until something happens. If not because cloud, the price of cloud is competitive. And I think the problem with uh, uh, I huh? think cloud, I, I cannot defend cloud as well because it's a uh, pretty much category. Yes. The very vendor lock in type of things is even harder to get out of it. Correct. That's another thing that I think let's put it this way. One, yeah. Let's put it this way. If not because of modern software stack is competitive and thanks to open source software, it reduce the cost of software. Uh we will still be using VB6 application in enterprise, <laughs> right? Running on Windows Windows 2000 or something. So yes, uh, that's the story. Lah uh let's move on next next one COVID now dashboard so this is actually this actually just launched today uh it's built by oh interesting they don't have the about here so this is a new dashboard uh uh built our work with community uh so but unfortunately it's also from one work i have problem with that but let's not go there for now let's not go there for now so uh the civil service medical community and the local tech community henry is one of very well known developer callum do i know callum hmm and do i i don't i don't remember so either way uh this is some of the community members uh putting their own resource are uh, putting their own resource to build a, a dashboard uh and the most important thing here is uh this is the government dashboard so this is not the yet another private dashboard right so i mean so those things are uh people have their heart for it and so why not but this is the government dashboard and what's interesting here is not the fact that uh, the, that, uh, the government website looks pretty here i mean it uh, we should expect it to happen what's interesting is COVID, uh, there's a community support uh, help for it and engage the community members yep. uh, even though that's only a few of them here it's uh it's and, pretty great even though even uh like community offering uh yeah services often it's not taken but yes but it's a good one yeah so this is uh, this is why this is interesting actually uh even though i may not agree with uh community members uh come up with our own cost uh because government have done so for various reasons and uh, this government actually had money for this kind of thing but either way and more importantly uh the <laughs> about page the about page uh actually featured the community member because previously you would expect you would expect uh to be the face of the minister and that's it. yeah so yes and that's about it for Dev Kami thing uh there's a few interesting one but uh for example uh somebody uh somebody had ported Pruda to a to a V5 GPU. So 
Yeah, maybe a bit too late. So this what we, this is what we curated lah. Actually, what I curated, nobody else curated. <laughs> yeah. So okay, credit to Zoom. <laughs> yes, uh, it's partially curated by the community because they submitted it. So let's move on. Last week, last week, uh, we talked about a uh, recipe uh, as the platform of a voice assistant, right? Uh, voice assistant. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk about voice to JSON. Uh, heard of it? No, I heard of it no. because you mentioned it, of course, but probably uh, not the audience. <laughs> so, uh, voice to JSON is another pet, uh, quote unquote platform, quote unquote platform for building voice connection. But officially, what they do is that uh, it's a one command. It's a one command that do multiple things. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it's not multiple program. It's one program, uh, and it provide a tool set to do. Uh, to do, I'm going to show you the command that actually supports that. Uh, it just a lot easier this way. Hey. Then I will do some live demo because a big confession here. I have it installed. I have it installed. But it's a bit small though. Um, are I'm you going, going to, to show us whatever is there? How about this better? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I may right. not be okay. able to I may not be able to share the voice unless unless uh, I need all you guys to make this less than mine. So let's start. Uh, they have some utility. So download profile is a utility. Then you can train your profile uh, put on the later. You can transcribe wave. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, you can so transcribe wave actually take two take uh, two different things. It can be a wave file, but it can also be uh, it can be also from uh, input. But there are but you can use wave file for it, which is awesome. I uh, can use stream live audio stream. So this thing can be uh, uh, you, I do not know about this to be honest. Let's go on. Uh, then you can recognize intent. It's their own set of command. Uh, I will demo this later. I did not configure too much. Uh, then they have, uh, they have their own weight word. Uh, they have a weight word they use uh, precise. More on that later. Uh, uh, just, just let me go through what they have first. Uh, record command so that you can uh, reduce it. You can pronounce word. Pronounce word is not pronounced. This is a uh, pronounced word here is actually show you the phone of the phone names. Uh, they only show the phone names. Right. Uh, then what you want here, well, you want to speak something that you then use speak sentence. Then there, there is something to help you to generate the intent to make life. The phonics is uh, based on a training set of uh, there's it, there must be some accent data involved, right? Correct. Uh, the uh, phoneme they have their training, but what their output is how do you pronounce it? That's why it's called a uh, standard phoneme map. Right? Then you can generate record for testing. Then you can test example. Then recommendation and whatever utility like. So remember that last week I said that a voice assistant need uh, five things. Uh, you need the sound system. You need a uh, speech to text. So there's a transcribe wave. Then you need the intent recognition. Uh, so recognize intent. Uh, but in between, you also have a wave word, uh, word detection. But this thing doesn't, uh, our voice this doesn't handle. Uh, then uh, later, uh, there is one component you won't handle, but more of that. Then the next thing is uh, it will do uh, text to uh, text to speech. So this is where the uh, speech sentence comes in. What voice today Jason doesn't do is it doesn't handle uh, it doesn't handle uh, forget the term dialogue management. So. Uh, Dialogue management is the thing where you're telling them that, uh, hey, computer, you don't keep having to tell them, hey, computer, uh, you will try to... You will, you will continue the conversation. Correct. 
So yes, so this is what they do. Uh, so let me try. Let uh, and the installation is. Uh, so what this provide is what voice suggestion provide is a set of command. What it doesn't provide is uh, it doesn't provide the network services. So Rust actually provide MQTT as uh, network services so that you can have a hosted service to do multiple things so that you can have a small power devices. Let's say you had a old Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pi Zero is not really powerful uh, to actually send voice over to a server and do things. What this, uh, this doesn't do that. This uh, only works for local. So this only designed for local, but it does not mean it does not mean that you cannot do that. Uh, how you would do that is uh, you will use the mosquito pub command. Uh, here's, so MQT, so you see here they use our uh, mosquito sub, right? Uh, they will use uh, the sub and pub command to actually uh, do the thing. It By default, it doesn't do it themselves, right? So, so which is why this on uh, this only do one part of the problem, but uh, this will be a more natural form for us uh, developers because it doesn't do too many. There's no UI. There's no hosted services. And it's just a CLI. Start, correct. Uh, so how it can work right now? Uh, it works better on the on the. It works Docker. Uh, it works well on, okay, uh, more on that Docker later. Uh, I have comment on that. Uh, this, unlike, unlike, unlike Rust P, uh, this works, should work on Linux, but that's it's almost true. Uh, actually, it should be true because uh, this runs on 18.04, but uh, because my computer is upgraded from Ubuntu 18.04, uh, so the libc6, uh, it's still there, but 20.04, it doesn't have libc6 anymore, near libc7. So it may not work on new version of new version of uh, Linux. And I oh, well, find out how it, to... you, you'll probably need to install those versions. I think you oh, yeah, can or, need to try, or you need to try to recompile it. Yeah, okay. correct. So that's what I'm thinking, actually. So I didn't try that. Maybe I will try that one day. It should, it should, in theory, able to be compiled. Well. Uh, oh, let's go back to, let's go back first. Let's go back first. Uh, Debian works for me. Uh, Docker image may work if you have a Linux box, but it does not work for, uh, the command works, the command works on WSL, but it doesn't produce sound. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. It doesn't, yes. it's not hooked to your system. Correct. And Unless it, you mount your, <laughs> but you defeat the purpose as well. If you mount correct. your audio device, then you defeat this uh, purpose as well. As well as well. Correct. So which is why you have to do something like, but because it's a command line at the thick binary and it can read from very far. So you can, uh, you can do so you can do command like this uh do a record then pipe it then do audio source and whatnot lah. so in theory so there is way for it and this is actually the advantage this is actually the advantage of having a command application uh so that uh so that you can do things like this and this is why uh you should have uh this thing are uh, best run on a linux system because only linux have or other Unix system potentially can provide this kind of operation. Uh, pipe uh, audio, uh, then send it as a binary so that voice to, voice to JSON can pick up from the pipe uh, the binary and do the transcription, right? So uh, in short, uh, in short, uh, the command works, the command works on Docker, or uh, but but the catch is, uh, the big catch is, uh, the big catch is audio may not be straightforward. Lah. And also, uh, I don't like the fact that they keep running Docker as a command line. 
if you use the Docker version because now you had multiple <laughs> multiple Docker image and you have to clean it up, right? How do you, how do you replace this command anyway? To be honest, what, what do you mean? How do you replace? Uh, how do I how do I run uh, how do I run this as Docker without creating multiple Docker images? No, it's not Docker images. You mean what? uh. You mean the the container? You don't want to create yeah, the yeah, yeah. orphan container. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You do a remove. Take up space, right? Yeah. You, you add a dash r to it. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's just remove or something. Like that. I I let me go and check. I, okay. Well, well, that's that's the point of Docker is that you there's no state like you you it's a temporary state like because it's yeah. always like whatever you run from the image and then it's a temporary state and when you close when you Build the container, then run the image again. It's from how that image started, right? That's oh, why it's yeah, 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 uh, right. no, it actually can resume it. If you do a start, right, oh, instead of run, you yeah. can actually resume oh, your right. previous container. Yeah. Well, if you if you so there are there are stuff like that, but you should not expect like a Docker container yeah. to you, like yeah. propagate. You, state. you should treat it as a stateless. Yeah. yeah, in this case, uh, the com this is awesome in a way that they don't. This thing I released. Uh, oh, dash uh, rm stateless. There's a clean okay. up. Dash, I'm gonna share the documentation. Okay. Yeah, this one I used that before. Uh, but let's move on a bit before I go on. Uh, because this command line, uh, this command line, they don't have state. Don't Normally, have I run state. my com. I I convert the command to a Docker compose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, it's just easier uh, to yeah, easier to run. I don't have to copy and paste. It. Remember it, it's documented yeah. in. Well, documented. yeah, to remember all of those switches because yeah. you just put Correct. it in a YAML file. Correct. Oh, actually, but I think it defeats the purpose if you need to mount something from your host. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Then might as well run it uh bare metal. Correct. But the uh, the only reason why you need to do that is that you have a whole system, like you say, the glibc of your host might not be yeah. compatible. Yes. Yeah. That that only uh, to encapsulate the dependency. Correct. So let's go on. Okay. So to get started, other uh, let's say you have a Linux box. Let's say you have a Linux box. You will get a Debian package. I use AMD sixty four, but if you use Pi, you will use the, this. Then you just dpkg installer or app installer. I use dpkg just because. Because I use Debian for a while. Then what you do is uh, you will download profile. Download profile. Uh, it's all here, to be honest. It's all here. La la la. So, blah, blah, blah. So uh, download download profile. I already have this lah. So dash dash profile then en. But there's multiple en. So there is. Is it profile? Yeah. Oh 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 oh. Ah, uh, it's like something like this. Dash 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 profile en. So I already download this, so it will should be fast. In theory, unless there's an update. Uh, I'm gonna need pick. Uh, where, where do you know where is the source where you download it? Ah, uh, it's actually at uh, again, it's on GitHub actually. Uh, it's on as GitHub long as again. it's a uh, HTTPS, or else uh, you're gonna be open up for for like uh, in and I don't know if it might be an entry for for a reboot code. Execution. Yep. Correct. So just speaking uh, on it. Lah. Yeah, but it's here actually. It's actually oh you got Mozilla TTS. Interesting. Sorry, distracted. I'm distracted. So for example, uh this is uh, all this GitHub uh the put uh the author put all the profile, all the profile on GitHub and you actually download from GitHub. Let me find the proper link supported language non profiling. Here you are. So, what suggestion have it? But all these are actually download from GitHub. Lah. So, for example, CMU. Uh, just know that, uh, just know that, I uh, just know that all these 
uh, YAML file. Uh, okay, so that, that was it. just know that uh, voice suggestion do not actually build do not actually build the system actually. So they're reusing things like uh, Pocket Sphinx, uh, Caldi, and whatnot. So they don't. Uh, they actually don't. Uh, they don't. Re uh, they don't rewrite stuff like this thing. I uh, believe it or not, is mostly integration. It's so, from uh, existing work by other people. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. So which is I, which is fine, right? I mean, that's the correct. point of open source is to correct. leverage other people's uh, work. Yeah, all for correct. people to complain. And but the only <laughs> thing is, uh, it's still magical. Uh, the way they do it is still magical. You have to dig out the source code for it. So let let's try something that makes sense. And I will so uh, recognize intent. But right then, I'm going to do another demo that I know for sure. You don't uh if I if you don't provide profile, you don't provide profile, uh they use the default profile. My default profile is English la. JQ dog. Nice, you learn how to use JQ. <laughs> yeah. So uh it will by default output the output the intent. They do not know the intent because I don't have it in sentence. Uh what would work well for me is actually is what time is it? Why do you have a period after JQ? What does it mean? Uh, it means root. root object. Root. Ah, it means uh, it doesn't build. JQ itself, uh, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, you, you do. You, are you familiar with uh, JQ, Justin? No, uh, but no. I know that you're piping so, whatever the result is. So it's so a pretty printer, a demo, but like I just don't know what. Uh, uh, when you do a JQ dot, let's uh, get like wave second dot wave second. Oh, dot yeah. uh, wave second. Yeah. So it's actually query, yeah. You you actually query that. It's a it's yeah. a tree. Ah. So dot means the root. Mm -hmm. So it means everything. Yeah. So it's like a yeah. It's a, a tree walker. Yeah. It's yeah. like a selector of sorts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's Correct. it's a very useful tool for when Correct. when you need to process a lot of JSON. Yep. Uh, so, big JSON uh, file. so you may ask, where is how do they know how to process this sentence? So can somebody make a guess? <laughs> uh, stop profile. Oh, are we gonna just wait for you to answer? Yeah. So, uh, I okay. This... So uh, do you remember? Do this you is remember? like a loose clues, right? Do you remember? Clues, like like he yeah, he files. recently. Uh, Steve recently made a video, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you remember sentence dot and I from last episode? No. So it's uh, similar to what you did last week. It's uh, just no, that uh, some people build it. Wrong. Uh, this is precisely, I'm going to show, uh, this is precisely what RASP use. They literally reuse, they literally reuse RASP uh, own, uh, own intent detection. I recognize intent. La, 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 la. Let me find. See, they use recipe and IU. That's the first clue. And they, they reuse uh, what recipe have built, but put it at command line. Because uh, what recipe does is, recipe is literally just a set of command line application, actually. They're literally just a set of command line application. Uh, so uh, what they do is uh, they actually, re I think they found out how to use the library. And if not the library, then at least, at least, uh, here you are. You see here, they use uh, NLU, recipe NLU. Mm -hmm. So it's the wrapper. Yeah, correct. So as I say, uh, oh, uh, when, uh, as I say, as I say, uh, this application do not build uh, their own tools. Uh, it's an integration, and it's a pretty good integration in like command line actually. So uh, NLU and this is what they use for uh, for sentence. 
I made one mistake just now. Uh, the first mistake is it's a set command line. Uh, not only half true because when I look at Rust the intent detection they use their own command. They, they do use a command, uh, but uh, what I suggested actually use the library for it. So uh, they don't notice that they don't have things like they don't even use thing like uh, la 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 la. TensorFlow or PyTorch and whatnot, right? Because uh, they just reuse what Rust is providing. So yes. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm so sorry. So anything else? Uh, anything else you want to know about this before I go on? No, to be clear for me, because you you already prefer on this. <laughs> yeah, correct, yeah, correct, correct. Is there a question online? Then is there any question online? Uh, we we'll just move, no. move on first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, move on. Let's move on. Then uh, I can't. Uh, then you can transcribe wave. Transcribe wave means you let's say record a sound in wave. Then you do your thing. I don't have the best command for it because I didn't record a sound. But transcribe everything. It's gonna transcribe. This is. Do we want uh, to let it transcribe our? Our recording. <laughs> yeah, possible? let's try that. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, they take a wave file. I do not know how to. Uh, we're I gonna just extract. I, I'll, I'll do it for you. <laughs> we'll extract yeah. it. Oh, there's a, a transcript screen. I, I figured that out later. But in short, uh, remember that I uh, remember that I say that. Uh, first suggestion: Don't assume that you know you have all the device ready. This is one of those things, lah. In fact, uh, when in fact, what happened is when I proposed using this for the dev com, uh, not dev com, engineers by bot, I was thinking that what if, uh, what if we can use this, uh, take a sound from from chat, then pipe pipe it in. Right, so our uh, transcribe stream and transcribe wave is there for this reason. So, and this I is one of the be, it's, it's not going to be easy for Discord because, uh, yeah. because Discord is at oh, why would you we have the wrong logo? <laughs> we have Ruby KL, <laughs> yeah. nobody noticed. <laughs> I noticed, but I kind of forget. I, I was planning okay. to change it, but I forgot so, about uh, it. <laughs> Well, what was, what was I <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, because uh, it's we the bot doesn't actually do trigger via voice. Yeah, the, correct. the bot trigger by command line. Then it does something to so, output probably a voice to the voice channel. But it's not I. It's not the another way around. Yeah, so you need to be yeah, it complicated lah. So you need to write your way, own Discord client basically to to correct intercept the uh the messages that are coming in yes but uh having this command means the potential is there no i mean there's a potential for us to do this especially we have things like transcribe stream that can run forever waiting for it and you'll notice here mosquito pub and all that so this actually as uh, support uh the support is i do not know how well it support raspi but it's almost the same thing if you want to so uh so two uh two way that can handle the first thing of the of the voice assistant the voice to text so they have transcribe wave and transcribe stream and both of these can listen directly to device and more importantly more importantly uh do it through wave file Vespi can do that but the interface is a bit more awkward this one because the command line is slightly a bit more natural, uh, but it's still awkward if you do not know command line. Lah. Then I already show recognize event. I, I can't show you uh wait word, but again, notice here, uh they use precise. Microsoft uh, precise design. is actually Microsoft. Um uh, Microsoft is actually an open source voice assistant. Uh, they actually sell devices and they're still in business. You can run it on Raspberry Pi, but uh, they also they also had their own devices. Uh, if I can find it, here you are. 
you can have your own device uh, have a device that do sell it as a uh, but what i get from comment is that there's not a lot of skills so the community to build skills it's not a buy now it's an invest now <laughs> yeah correct i mean they do have a device they do have a device but at least they uh, they open source their stuff correct so they do uh but the community do not build a lot of skill for it which i think is pity because that's why these things are useful actually so either way they release things like precisely uh this is the break word detection so this is where you tell them like hey my crop right uh recipe can support more so for example they use pico voice pico voice uh is the one where you can i demo to my, uh, multiple that, that can support multiple break word but uh, because uh they are commercial company and it's uh and they don't have obligation to keep your custom custom word so they do not keep the data you have to retrain it so there's the limitation a uh, microf can potentially can potentially train your own model because it's fully open source but it's not as easy as pico voice so pico voice is one of the first thing that uh recipe support uh rest about i th- voice to jason decide that uh decide that uh, uh the restriction on pico voice is not suitable for this so he used uh precise instead precise is not as easy to use for custom word whereas a uh, pico voice can but pico voice had commercial limitation so yeah uh this is the big word system la. so you ha- so uh how to run this is you run this forever you run this forever then then there will output la. <coughs> so the thing is this is actually a bit awkward for me actually because this runs forever uh when they have these they output a word but where does this go through i don't know i don't know i mean pb is a protopath yeah yeah, yeah. it's a protopath mm-hmm. this neural network model uh it's uh it's a yeah. uh, it's a neural network model somewhere because uh microf precise are using neural network it is also the element led yeah i know <laughs> we were Pumbum. talking about like random trivia uh, which is pumbum which is first used by the roman which is why they go extinct because people think that they have led in their time now they turn stupid let's move let's continue with this a uh, big word are Wait, uh, wait, wait, uh, are meant to run forever. Uh, and will output a JSON line, but I do not know how to integrate this. So, uh, maybe I'll figure that out later. So, I think what we would do is you may just wait once it output, once it detect one time, then stop, then do your thing, then call, call the command again. I don't know, I don't have an idea how to do this. But then you, uh, I will show you something else later. But I think, it, uh, then you have pronounced word. Oh, you can record command. I tell you that before. Pronounced word is the phoneme. Uh, this from CMU actually. Uh, so you need this. You actually need this to train. Uh, to predict. Uh, to predict. Uh, to predict the voice of some word so for example def kami is not a word that exists in cmu for example the some they use are the pocket sphinx cmu data so you have to train it this way a pronounced word then you have to save it in custom words.txt in the profile where is it it's actually do they have it uh, you custom. have a custom dictionary? No, they don't have it here. Uh, let me see if Pocket Sphinx have it. Or maybe I don't have that here I, because I, I'm not, I've been trained M- for custom. Mago. Like. But it's not Mago. It's Mago. Yeah. I... Mago. So either, so either way, um, you need this. Uh, you need this to predict the initial 
phoneme of a word like Dev Kami. I need to do that later. I need to show the ad. Maybe it's my bad. I should show that. Then what you do is you save it so that they'll pronounce Dev Kami, for example, properly. Have you have you made it pronounce Dev Kami properly? No, because I tried to get the basic. I tried. I was only mm. playing with the basic. But, uh, how, but how does it is, pronounce it without the without the proper phonetic thing? Because okay, it still can it, pronounce it, right? I'm going to I'm going to switch to I'm going to switch to output. Uh, probably. Are, are you are you doing demos now? Yeah, we have ten minutes to do a demo. Okay, uh, let's do that. I'm going to put line up. Uh, probably a good idea to mute your stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I I'm mute going myself. To pronounce. Oh, now, oh, sorry. I draw a speak sentence. I'm your new overlord. So it doesn't work ever, but let's say I use profile. Uh, LS, I don't remember what's the profile do I have. Uh, you, uh, e N U S. Uh, I need to put profile in the beginning. Profile. E N. E N U S. Kaudi. Oh, uh, Kaudi is actually another library that I will cover that next week. Actually, uh, Overlord. I'm your new Overlord. Then let's say I use uh. E N C M U E N U S uh, la 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 pocket sphinx pocket sphinx C M U I'm your new overlord. Okay, I don't think profile is the uh I think pocket oh I know why. Uh the reason is the reason is the only TTS is actually uh, the only TTS that you have, uh, that I have, uh, no, that voice to uh, Jason support is actually eSpeak or Mary TTS. Uh, Mary TTS is another one. Let me switch to that. Uh, I like Mary TTS because it's a bit more, it's actually a bit more natural. Uh, and more importantly, there is an online demo. But you need to, uh, you need to find the... Oh, interesting. I think it's loading. Uh, is there another demo? It might be slow. It might be slow. Ugh. It was fast yesterday, by the way. It was fast yesterday. It works on my computer. <laughs> Really? Maybe you demo it. Oh, I mean that's the that's the joke. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I think uh, the network might be okay. It works now. Worked on my computer yesterday as well. But that was okay. yesterday. I I think this is where Docker needs to can help, right? Yep. Oh, uh, okay. I think. Okay, interesting. Wait, I don't think I have. So they have a very cool demo, but I don't think I think they change it because there is one that there is actually one that produce. Okay, uh, let's wait for a bit. Uh, I have a demo that output voice directly, and there is multiple profile. Maybe maybe you can give Jiliong the link and then Jiliong yeah. can load it. No no no, I it doesn't work on my machine. I it was uh, it was a joke. I don't have it. <laughs> I'm Windows uh, now. No no no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm also on Windows now. No no. Uh, Steaming is trying to load the website, right? Yeah. Uh, so there is uh, there is a reason why voice to Jason do not use Google. Uh, use Google text-to-speech, uh, the reason is cost, and the second is that they want to prioritize open source. So 
uh, most of the hobbyists, uh, most of the hobbyists uh, TTS system actually use uh, Google because that's the easiest and most easiest, right? But they also cost something. Uh, voice to uh, voice to Jason make a decision to not use Google text to speech. Uh, it's a decision that they make. So. Yeah, uh, it can it can support this, but um, and Mary TTS is actually an open source Java application. So let me go back to my whole screen again. This time, about, uh, okay, I'm going to go back to voice Jason. Uh, can you use other possibly? Uh, what more likely to happen is uh, you may use things like let's say Google TTS again to output a wave file, then the, then you pronounce it. So, yeah. Then, yes, I think that's about it, actually. That's about it. So you have half of the... So this one is more interesting because they're, they're more committed to open source. So no proprietary service. They don't even use Pico, Pico, uh, Pico text, which is very useful for microcontrollers or small devices. Uh, they don't even use Google, for example, because uh, no proprietary technology. But what you get is a command line uh, for you to do things. And if thing and because it's a command line system, you can integrate with other services. For example, this is an example to use uh, Rasa, which is a bit a bit better, but it's maybe too big for them. So you can so you can just pipe your way things and pipe it back for you to be useful. So yeah, that's the point of uh, that's the point of voice to JSON. So what I think about voice to JSON, short answer is I think this is a command, uh, this is a command line tool if you have Linux box, it works. Uh, and the command line tools is meant to be flexible. So you can do whatever you need. Uh, and because it's split into multiple things to be called by command, they do not dictate what tools you have to use. So uh, if if Google, you can you have enough quota for Google TTS, awesome. You can use it if you need to. Uh, if, you, if you want to commit to open source, then you have something for you to use. Uh, then, uh, and this is purely local, there's no network service, but if you want to, you can do that using... Uh, you can still use it to pipe it to an uh, MQT client. What I do not like about the thing is uh, they don't extract it as a library, but possibly because uh, all the libraries are, uh, voice suggestion itself are calling the libraries. They are calling the libraries. So we just have to find the libraries to do it ourselves. Lah. So uh, what I think about voice suggestion Pretty interesting. Uh, pretty interesting. Again, uh, I don't uh, potentially able to integrate with our application, but it just command line. So maybe we'll figure it out later. So next week, uh, are we going to cover the individual tools? The individual tools for us to build a TTS system. Uh, I will focus on things that can run locally on your own computer. So. Uh, no Google AI services, no no Amazon AI services. Uh, and the point is to learn how things work, not to buy services and offload it. I mean, if you don't care about it, you just use sure, go for it. But the point of the episode is to know how things work and give opportunity to go to this technology. Do, do, so, we, need a, do, do we need an NVIDIA graphics card? I hope not. Uh, one thing that uh, one challenge is, uh, one bonus point that I would do for each of the tools I introduced is, uh, do not it can runs on a, it do not need a cloud service to run and it do not need a powerful computer to run. Mm -hmm. Ideally, can run on the Pi, but let's not worry about that. I mean, chances is, chances is, uh, we may run it on a Pi. The Pi as a as just a bunch of uh, it's just a runner lah, not really the one that train it. 
Uh, correct, correct, correct. But but mm. Rust can run it on can run training on a on uh, on the Pi tree. So uh, so that's why it's a bit more interesting. I guess you just but need a, a proper microphone, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, which is something I should buy from Citron. Citron had actually sell the microphone, but yeah, next week, uh, next time. Uh, so yeah, uh, individual tools, individual TTS and whatnot, this next week. Uh, if there's too many tools, maybe it will be another episode, but let's see how it goes. So are we done? Shall we say goodbye? Yes, let's say goodbye. See you next yeah. week. Like, share, yes. subscribe. We're yeah. we're back at Facebook and Twitch, right? So uh, until until we stop paying them. <laughs> until we stop paying them. So uh we will use it while it lasts. Lah. Okay. All right. Bye. Uh, that's it. Goodbye, man. <laughs>